Hello and welcome. I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Topping our news tonight, an update in a Sarasota County murder case. A suspect charged in the 2011 death of a woman back in court today. 54-year-old William Case has been charged with homicide in the death of Karen Quartz. Detectives say they linked Case to the murder through DNA and a shoe impression that was found at the scene. Case's attorney had previously requested a mistrial, saying his client is incompetent. And today, a judge determined Case is still incompetent to stand trial. A psychologist who has treated Case in the past says he has chronic paranoid schizophrenia and his mental state has not improved from the last time she saw him in 2012. Employees at Goodwill, Minnesota received a bizarre donation yesterday and it's now making national headlines. A toy airsoft replica of a military grenade launcher was donated to the store on 15th Street East in Bradenton. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office says it's an airsoft launcher like those used in military simulations or paintball games. Inside the launcher was a live grenade that, used, that is used rather with airsoft launchers. The store manager told sheriff's deputies the item had come in a shipment from another store a few days ago. The employees at that other location said they sent it along because they did not know what it was. The original donor is still unknown. Two years in the making, Doctors Hospital of Sarasota announcing its new emergency room in Manatee County will open on March 26th. It's located on State Road 70, just east of I-75. The new facility will offer 24 hours, seven day a week emergency care coverage, along with x-ray, CT scan, ultrasound, and lab services. The ER will have about 40 employees, including nurses, paramedics, radiology technicians, and housekeepers. In other news tonight, Longbow Key Police are investigating a possible homicide after a woman was found dead inside a sauna at the Lombok Key Club moorings. Police ruling out a natural or accidental cause of death with obvious signs of trauma that leaves homicide or suicide as the last possibility. Saying it's Jess Dowdrick joining us live from the Longbow Key Police Department with the very latest on this story. Jess. Jacqueline Scott, Longboat Key Police are putting all of their available resources on this case. They're investigating every possibility, interviewing any possible witnesses, and working around the clock to try to figure out this case. Inside this poolside clubhouse is where a 54-year-old Sarasota woman was found dead. The door remains chained shut as police still work to determine how she died. The victim was taken to the medical examiner's office uh, where he performed a post-mortem autopsy. Uh, and uh, it, at the conclusion of that autopsy, uh, he was inconclusive with regard to the manner of death. Her name is still a mystery. Police not willing to release that information until they can rule out that it wasn't a suicide. Uh, she's a Sarasota resident, uh, and uh, she and her husband also have a vessel that's uh, moored at, uh, at the dockyard, and they stay part-time on that. Police met with the medical examiner on Wednesday, but had no success in breaking the case. They have sent out DNA and other information in a toxicology report in hopes of determining a cause of death. But investigators have no idea when those results could come back. There were signs of trauma, uh, but that trauma could have been self-inflicted. We just don't know at this point. And more than a week since this body was found, much of the community is still in the dark that anything even happened. Just totally shocked. We'll um, be anxious to hear what what the problem is or was, and what we need to be looking out for. Well, quite terrifying. Yeah, it's not something you, you'd ever hear. Longboat Key is uh, quite a, a quiet place. Not something you'd really expect to hear. Longboat Key hadn't experienced a homicide in 17 years before the double murder at the Zoda Beach Resort back in August. If this woman's death is ruled a homicide, it'll mark the Keys third in less than six months. We don't want to alarm the community, but we want them to know that we're doing everything that we can, that if this were, does in fact um, turn out to be a homicide, that we, we're not leaving any stone unturned. Chief Cummings says at this point in time, there's nothing that the community to do, can do to help them out until they can determine this woman's cause of death. So I was talking to some residents over at the Longboat Key Club the, earlier today, and they say there's been a strong police presence since this incident happened. They say during the day, at night, 24-7, they're always seeing police out there. Reporting live on Longboat Key, Jess Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you so much. 
Let's get out to our weather because it was just a gorgeous day out there it today. It really wasn't was. It? Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob here. Yes, it doesn't get much better than this. Uh, great weather for tennis or golf or whatever you may want to do this afternoon. It was gorgeous, wasn't it? A lot of clear skies out there. We saw the sunshine as a result of high pressure building in some drier air as well. And uh, we're going to see a little increase in clouds, it looks like, as we in head into Friday as a result of a weak frontal system. This front is really not going to disrupt things all that much. It'll just bring a slight increase in clouds. Now, we still have that upper level wind pattern that's bringing clouds in from the west to the east. Occasionally, these upper cirrus clouds will cause for a nice sunset again tonight. Uh, just a few clouds along the uh, east coast now around the area of high pressure. That cold front now is stretching all the way down through West Virginia, all the way down through Tennessee, Arkansas, and into Texas. Now this cold front will continue to move to the southeast, but the main area of low pressure remains well to the north, so it won't have a lot of impact in terms of bringing us the cold air here. 72 degrees right now. Is that nice? West and northwest winds at 6. And the pressure 3015. That's high, and it will stay that way. Details on our weekend weather forecast, which is fast approaching, coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Bob. The month of February is dedicated to hit and run awareness, and the Florida Highway Patrol is reminding all drivers to stay at the scene when involved in a crash. The goal is to reduce the number of hit and run crashes in Florida and to encourage people to anonymously report information to solve hit and run investigations. In 2017, there were over 98,000 hit and run crashes in Florida with 177 deaths, and in a quarter of crashes every year, a driver leaves the scene. Leaving the scene of a crash is a felony and a driver will have their license revoked for at least three years and can also be sentenced to at least four years in prison. FHP says the most important thing a driver can do when they are involved in a crash is to stay at the scene and call for help. The public is encouraged to report hit and runs by dialing star FHP. That is also star 347. Charlotte County Sheriff's Office is considering new canine policies after the escape and death of a canine in December. The proposed changes would create extra protections against canines escaping their handlers' homes. A member of canine unit would have to be present if the animal is removed from a secure area while its handler is not present. Also, handlers who keep their canines in garages would be required to keep the garage door down while the handler is not present. Canine Ido went missing from his kennel on December 9th after his handler left the garage door open so that Ido could enjoy the cooler weather. He was later found dead about a mile from where he went missing. And of course, canines here on the Sun Coast have a huge responsibility. These four-legged investigators are part of the Peace River Canine Search and Rescue Unit who train to find missing people and human remains. They work with local families and law enforcement to provide answers, but these ones are not your typical canines. They double as pets and then they work as working dogs on the other on the sideline and uh, they just uh, doesn't matter the size of the dog or the breed of the dog. It just matters whether the dog wants to work. Coming up tonight at 6 p.m. I'll show you how this local nonprofit is taking your dogs and turning them into those special tools for investigators. Looking forward to that yeah. coming up at 6. Right now, ABC 7 business commentator Richard Stern joins us. And uh, on the first day of a new month, some mixed results today at Wall Street. Mixed results, but as Bob said, it was probably a better day to be on the golf course. Because you got off and you found out the Dow was up 37 points, no big deal. Well, yeah. guess what? We were up 160 at the high of the day, down 130 at the low of the day. So more than just a stroll on the golf course, I would say. You've seen a lot going on. Lots of earnings reports coming out and more and more still coming. We also saw a rise in interest rates today, which frankly is not terribly helpful for the stock market. The 10-year U.S. government bond, which is really a benchmark of interest rates, is trading now at 2.77 percent. That's the highest we've seen since 2014. Do remember the Fed met just yesterday and did not change anything about interest rates, but three interest rate hikes during the year is definitely expected. Let's take a look and see how we finished the day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average there you see up a little over 37 points, 14 one hundredths of one percent, closing at 26,186.71, that on volume of 807 million shares. The Nasdaq down for the day almost 26 points, more than one third of one percent, closing at 7,385.86, that on volume of 1,906,000,000 shares. The S&P didn't do much at all, but it was down, down 6 one-hundredths, less than two points, at 2,821.98. Well, yes, it's the 1st of February, but the month of January, not only in the books, in the record books. It was quite a month. Some statistics for you. For the month, the 
markets. S&P 500 index up 5.6%, the Dow up 5.8%, the NASDAQ up 7.4%. That is in one month, the best month we have seen since March of 16, the best January we have seen since 1997. And you ready for this? The Dow and the S&P have now been up for 10 months in a row. The last time that happened was in 1959, a mere 59 years ago. So wow. I guess we got a pretty good run going here. Some good start to the new year. Absolutely. Well, what can we expect for tomorrow? Well, after the close today, we had earnings from no less than Amazon, Apple, that kind of ring a bell, mm -hmm. and something called Google. Well, all three of them announced earnings after the close, so tomorrow at the open, you could see some real excitement, definitely. All right, thank you so much, Richard, You're for joining us. You're very welcome. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, another school shooting in the United States, this time in California. We'll have the latest in that investigation. And Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast, plus new concerns about what is now considered the worst flu season in years. Cadillac. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our winter white event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed, Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with Mom but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. You don't want to miss the annual Venice Orchid Show and Sale February 3rd and 4th at the Venice Community Center. It is the largest orchid show on Florida's West Coast with thousands of blooming orchids on display and for sale. You'll also find orchid growing supplies, artwork, jewelry, accessories, and free classes. Make plans now to attend the Venice Orchid Show and Sale February 3rd and 4th at the Venice Community Center. Go to VAOS.org online for more details. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a part-time producer to help on the Suncoast View. Organizational skills, technical knowledge, and dynamic personality required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our winter white event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. A Los Angeles middle school is shaken following a shooting that sent two teenagers to an area trauma center. One boy suffered a gunshot wound to the head and a girl is in fair condition after being shot in the wrist. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has more. Officers searching students one by one at this Los Angeles middle school after police say a 12-year-old girl shot two classmates. It's horrible. It, it's a tragedy. Inside a classroom just before 9 this morning, police say a 15-year-old boy was shot in the head, a 15-year-old girl shot in the wrist, both now being treated in a hospital as well as three others who suffered cuts and other minor injuries in the chaos. Those kids are too young. They're traumatized. 
the entire school put on lockdown. He sent me that text saying there's a cycle with a weapon. With students calling their families in tears. She just told me what was going on, like, hey, someone just got shot, and I need you to be here right now. I'm scared. This, one of at least a dozen school shootings across the country in just the past month. Here in Los Angeles, investigators are questioning the person of interest and other students, trying to figure out how this happened. Hopefully we will find out when the, when the right time is how our young person on this campus ended up having the ability to have access to a firearm and bring it onto a campus. And they are still working to piece together the motive. As for the two students who were shot, we're told the girl was transported in fair condition. The boy shot in the head was last listed in critical but stable condition. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Let's change gears, talk about our weather. It was a, a really nice day in the Sun Coast, and uh, I know we're, everyone's looking forward to the weekend yeah. where there's a possibility of some rain, right? Yeah, it was higher just a couple days ago, so that's a good trend. Uh, where the uh, rain chances are lowering now. It's at 40%. It had been as high as 60%. Right. Uh, the computer models are, are kind of confused with this one as, as far as the low pressure goes. Uh, I think we'll get the rain if it does occur. It will be afternoon uh, once again and uh, possibly even later into the evening on Sunday. So I know I have early tea time on Sunday, so I should be okay. And a lot Can't of people will be up. watching the Super Bowl. So yeah, so they then won't the Super really Bowl be outside. About that. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a good time to go do things, you know, during the Super Bowl yeah. because uh, there's uh, everyone's inside. That's yeah. true. There's no there's no uh, busy parking lots or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, we are looking at this, some uh, great shots coming in to our picks at mysuncoast.com. Get a look at this. I had to show it again. It got so many shares and went pretty much viral on the internet. This is the moon rising yesterday, and Dylan John Wade Cox, a great photographer, who was on the View just last week uh, with his uh, pictures that he takes around town. He's part of the lightning mafia that go chase storms during the summer months and show some uh, interesting lightning shots. Well, the moon rise tonight will be at 7:41. So. Uh, go ahead and take a shot of that. There's a Van Wazel in the foreground there. Casey Key webcam showing beautiful conditions. Finally, uh, for area beachgoers on Casey Key, you can see pretty much calm conditions out there out over the waters. It should make for another gorgeous sunset tonight with some high clouds streaming in from the Gulf. They always light up once the sun goes below the horizon. Weather headlines read like this. A uh, cold front is approaching. Uh, we'll see an increase in clouds, it looks like, uh, for Friday. Uh, still, though, a mixture of sun and clouds. It's not going to be a total cloudy day, but we will see the clouds coming in later on. It should not spoil, by the way. Uh, music on Main at Lakewood Ranch. We have to be going live from there tomorrow night. A warmer weekend ahead than last. We'll see temperatures warming up into the low to mid 70s for the most part. And then a few showers are possible late Sunday. I'm not totally sold on the forecast model solutions of, the, of that. We'll take a look at one right here. Here's a future cast showing here's the front. A few showers to the panhandle possible tomorrow. And then the front comes down. You'll notice that rain depiction moves away. We don't see much rainfall with it. And that's the result of some drier air out ahead of it. And then the front continues to move southward of our area on Saturday. Saturday looks to be nice. We'll see a return to that easterly component as high pressure builds off the coast of Georgia. That will warm us up. We'll see highs into the low 70s, a mixture of sun and clouds on Saturday. Should be a decent day. And then the next low pressure area developing here, a late Saturday afternoon, eventually tracking toward North Florida on Sunday. With it, a trailing cold front will bring us a chance for a few showers. I mentioned on uh, late Sunday afternoon and evening. Now the jet stream continues to rip right across the northern part of the state right there. And you can see some of the high clouds depicted by the satellite review. Here comes that front already producing real showers. These are uh, legitimate showers now moving through northern portions of Mississippi into Alabama and into Tennessee tonight. Some snow as far south as Kentucky and that snow uh, moving into parts of Tennessee behind it, some colder air, but that real cold air is going to stay basically to the north and push off to the eastern United States over the next 24 to 48 hours. For us, high pressure has been the dominating weather influencing factor. It's located just to the east of the state, and that's providing us that easterly wind component, which really warms us up here. We get rid of that north wind, and things uh, tend to be quite nice here. And current conditions, 72. The dew point is at 51. Winds are out of the west-northwest. and Pretty light, 6 miles an hour. And the forecast for, actually not Wednesday, but this is uh, for Friday, showing... Uh, generally fair conditions on Saturday, not too bad. This is a European forecast model, and this is the one that depicts a little bit more rainfall on Sunday. The GFS, which is the United States model, not showing as much. We'll show you that coming up in just about 15 minutes from now. Let's get to the seven-day forecast and show you what's happening as far as that goes. Boating tomorrow looks good. North winds at 5 to 10 knots and a light chop in the bays and inland waters. Here it is. 
Groundhog Day tomorrow, 73 degrees. Uh, the groundhog, will he or will he not see his shadow? We'll see and find out if we can expect six more weeks of winter. But nice on Saturday, just a mixture of sun and clouds. That rain chance at 40% on Sunday, which isn't all that high. And then notice temperatures stay fairly warm right on in through the period into the mid 70s. And who cares if the groundhog sees his shadow because we'll take six more weeks of winter down here as long as it's in the low 70s. Back to you. I'll agree to that. Thank you so much, Bob. Let's get to first alert traffic right now. We're seeing uh, some backup on both lanes of the Green, the, the uh, DeSoto Bridge in Manatee County, over from uh, between Bradenton and Palmetto. But uh, it looks worse as you're heading south on that uh, span right now. Jacqueline. Scott, in health news tonight, new concerns about what has become the worst flu season in years. Today, officials are sadly confirming more child flu deaths across the U.S. ABC's Linda Lopez has more on this alarming epidemic. In Georgia, another flu-related child death now confirmed. 15-year-old Kira Molina of Noonan, Georgia, died after first testing negative for influenza. Ms. Molina succumbed to liver failure due to the flu. A four-year-old girl in New Jersey and a 10-year-old boy in California, both also succumbing to the flu. This doctor in New York saying this influenza season is now serious. Yeah, it's severe now. It certainly is severe now. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the proportion of people seeing their health care provider for flu-like illness at the end of January was 6.6 percent, the highest recorded since the 2009 pandemic. In Marietta, Georgia, five-year-old Eli Snook died due to flu complications. He had even briefly returned to school after two weeks of symptoms before taking a turn for the worse. School called me and said that he had 101 degree fever. Some doctors and clinics now offering free flu shots to help curb the epidemic. But Dr. Firestein telling us if you feel you're coming down with it, getting medical treatment quickly is key. If somebody feels that they're, they're getting sick, they, they, should, they should go see a doctor and, and they, they, don't, they don't need a test to be treated. And the number of flu cases nationwide continues its alarming rise. From last week to this week alone, the number of people sick rose 23%. Data suggests that 16 million people, or 5% of the population, could be infected. But doctors say it's still not too late to get that flu shot. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. Meanwhile, the flu antiviral medication Tamiflu is now raising concerns for parents after an Indiana teen took his own life. Just days after taking that medication, the number of flu cases continue to rise here in Sarasota, and the number one option to get rid of the, that virus is to use Tamiflu. Tamiflu's label does mention that symptoms like hallucination, seizures, or confusion can occur in kids who have the flu. An infectious disease specialist at SMH says flu symptoms like a high fever and chills can easily lead to abnormal behavior. Influenza, what it does is cause a lot of inflammation in your body. Those fevers are very concerning, especially really high fevers, puts you at a higher risk of having complications, including seizures, uh, and children are, tend to be, again, more susceptible. There have been no reports of Tamiflu negatively impacting patients on the Sun Coast. Health professionals say parents with kids who have the flu should always look for changes in their children's behavior. Well, you may want to think twice about drinking coffee in California. The state keeps a list of chemicals it considers possible causes of cancer, and one of them, acrylamide, is created when coffee beans are roasted. A lawsuit filed in Los Angeles targets companies that make or sell coffee. According to the suit, the defendants failed to provide clear and reasonable warning that drinking coffee could expose people to that chemical. The suit seeks to impose fines and force the companies to post warnings. However, the companies are Argue that acrylamide levels in coffee should be considered safe under state law and that the health benefits of coffee outweigh the risks. Stay with us coming up how a team of teachers have taught an orca whale to talk. And a landslide in Washington is moving each week. Why geologists say it's not actually a risk. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our winter white event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com.
Choral Artists of Sarasota presents Carmina Burana in Motion. Karl Orff's choral masterpiece, Carmina Burana, bursts into life in this lavish production designed for 60 voices, three celebrated soloists, a two piano percussion ensemble, and dynamic premier choreography performed by members of Sarasota Contemporary Dance. Do not miss this lush feast of the senses. Saturday, February 3rd, 4 p.m. at Church of the Palms in Sarasota. Tickets and info are at choralartistsarasota.org or by calling 941-387-4900. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. These dogs have a huge responsibility. They work with local families and law enforcement to find missing people, but they're not your typical canines. The dogs have a very specific ability, and they're trained to use it right here on the Sun Coast. I'm Jacqueline Matter, and I'll show you how a local group is taking dogs like these and turning them into special tools for investigators. Essentially, these dogs are living a double life. Yeah. <laughs> Sun Coast Canines, tonight on ABC 7 News at 6 p.m. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Winter White event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. There's a wild turkey terrorizing traffic in Pennsylvania and a massive landslide in Washington State that's slowly moving more than a foot a week. Here's Reed Binion with tonight's Take a Look at This. Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania has a wild turkey problem and we're not talking about the Kentucky bourbon. He's sort of like the neighborhood pet. Meet the local celebrity Turkey Stew and no, we're not talking about the kind of turkey stew you eat. Although if he doesn't stop chasing local traffic, he may end up that way. One of the big concerns that we're having with stew is that people are starting to get a stop and get out of their cars and chase them off the road. And as you can see here, Stu is the one who likes to do the chasing. Now to Rattlesnake Ridge in Yakima County, Washington, where a geologist says four million cubic yards of rocks and dirt are moving at about three inches a day. As you may have heard, the um, time frame for this movement could drag out over, over a period of quite some time, up to years. Geologists say the slow-moving landslide is not currently at risk for a sudden failure, but if it does, they are prepared. We're ready at a moment's notice, so if something were to change or the situation warranted, we can ramp back up and, and meet the needs of public safety. For Take a Look at This, I'm Reed Binion. Hello. International One, researchers have taught a female orca whale named Wiki to imitate human speech. Scientists say a whale can learn new vocalizations by imitating its trainer. Take a listen. Wiki was able to repeat a handful of words, including hello, bye bye, and one, two. The orca lives at the Marine Land Aquarium in France. The Mars Curiosity rover is getting pretty good at selfies while exploring the red planet. This is Curiosity on Mars's Vera Rubin Ridge, which it's been investigating the last several months. If you look just behind the rover's mast, you can find a mountain photo bombing the vehicle. That mountain is Mount Sharp, where Curiosity has been primarily based at, since landing on Mars five years ago. Mount Sharp provides Curiosity with access to the red planet's layers, which were formed over millions of years. 
Still to come on your Suncoast News, controversy in Venice over a regatta scheduled this year, why some boaters are unhappy with the annual upcoming event. And a new device dis designed just for disabled golfers has made its way to the Suncoast. Now it's helping wheelchair users get back to doing sports and activities they love. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. When my youngest, Addie, was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light, the night light, with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs>